I uh, my name's David, I'm the wandering ponderer. Today I'm down in the town, but this time I'm chasing a story about an American. An American family that's come over to this country. And I'm here to see members of this family. I'm down by the church and this is what we're going to investigate. We're going to investigate why this family has been maligned. This family came to this country from North America. Back in the latter part of the 1800s. And ever since they'd been here, although they were here at request of the British, they've now camped smear campaigns against them. And it's a family where trees play an important role. Trees play an important role in their being here in this country. Why am I in the churchyard? Because if you want to meet members of this family, this is the place to come. And I mean living members, not dead ones. Although there's probably dead ones around. This is a churchyard after all. Now normally, they're around. And especially this time of year, they get seen see one now. The grey squirrel. And there's two. Grey squirrel. There's a history with the grey squirrel that not many people know about. The stories you hear about how they drove out the red squirrels and how they're spreading disease, as it turns out, it's not really the true story. I've done much studying regarding our precious grey squirrel and over the years surveys have been done on grey squirrel populations particularly a survey conducted using DNA and they found out that much according to uh, popular belief that the, di the squirrels uh, interbred and became a super species that eventually ended up wiping out the, the remnants of the red squirrel, this is not the case. I have a piece of paper, this is a study by an independent wildlife consultant, John Bryant. It's entitled, The True History of Grey Squirrels in Britain. In England over the years, and I'm talking going back to uh, yeah, 1700s, 
long before the grey squirrel ever came over here, the deforestation and the agricultural industry, because of war and the needs for fuel, the needs for wood, their deforestation caused the demise of the British native red squirrel. Lots of the pine trees, lots of trees that the, that the red squirrels relied on were chopped down. So their habitat began to get smaller and these trees were replaced with broadleaf trees, things like oaks. Because of this, the populations were decimated. Now it says that it caused the red squirrels to become extinct in Ireland and South Scotland by the early 18th century. And the red squirrel was rare in the Scottish Highlands by the early 19th century. No great squirrels in this country at that time. The reds were reintroduced to Scotland from England and in 1793 Scandinavian red squirrels were brought in to save the species. In 1837, 20,000 imported red squirrels were sold in London, many of whom escaped into the wild. We're not talking about grey squirrels. Robert Burton, in his book Animal Life, Equinox 1991, suggests that such reintroductions might have diluted the gene pool of the distinct British race of squirrel. Possible. Boosted by the reintroduction of foreign reds and by a massive reforestation of conifers replacing broadleaf woodland, red squirrel numbers recovered rapidly and by the late 1800s reached peak numbers described to be at plague proportions. Hence they were slaughtered in their hundreds of thousands as woodland pests who strip bark and rob birds nests and raid gardens. This is the red squirrel we're talking about, not the grey squirrel. It invades gardens and will take peas from their pods as cleanly as a man. In spring it turns carnivorous and eats eggs and young birds and damages trees by biting bark and preventing the flow of sap. And this was written by Natural History Animals by a man called George Jennison, the curator of Bellevue Zoological Gardens in 1927. Between 1900 and 1925, red squirrel numbers declined drastically under human persecution, which in Hampshire's new forest officially ended in 1927. Now, since 1876, the red squirrels have been slowly replaced by North American grey squirrels imported and released in various parts of England, particularly from Woven Park from 1889. Over the next few years Woven Abbey sent grey squirrels to sites in Debingshire, Yorkshire, Kew Gardens, Cheshire, Ireland and London, London Zoo, in which which in turn sent them to Dorset. A series of hard winters and epidemic diseases such as coccidiosis, or I can't 
can't pronounce half of that. And Paparopox virus hit the Reds hard. And it has been alleged that the disease was transmitted by greys who are immune to the virus. But the truth is, in studies conducted on 44 colonies of red squirrels that had got the disease, only four of those colonies had grey squirrels in their location. The rest, no grey squirrels were to be seen. So basically, the grey squirrels making, bringing disease into the country isn't true because of deforestation and replacing the trees with more broadleaf trees. So a lot of the pines and that at the time were removed. And the red squirrels, like the pine trees, the grey squirrels, they're not too fussed. They can survive in this climate. And nature has given the grey squirrel an immunity against the, dis the diseases that are killing off the red squirrels. As always, when humans get involved in trying to solve a problem that they actually have caused in the first place, they tend to make things worse. That's, that's us, that's humans. There began a, a campaign against the grey squirrel in 1931. Uh, Field, ma Field magazine launched an anti-grey squirrel campaign and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and Food encouraged the destruction of the species. But by then, 10,000 square miles of Britain had been colonised. During the following six years, despite the campaign, the greys range doubled. The grey squirrels breed quicker than red squirrels. Their, their colonies survive easier in this climate. Then there was a bounty put on grey squirrels and every, every squirrel tail that was handed into the police station people got got a shilling for every and then the bounty was later put up to I think about uh, two shillings which by today's two shillings by today's money um, works out and the value works out about four quid four pounds for a squirrel tail. Today grey squirrels are still considered to be pests. Vermin, they are not. They're far from it. Um, they say they damage trees. That, they were saying that about red squirrels. Who do you believe? Really? This is a, an interesting story, and in, uh, this is. Um, I'll leave links to uh, where I got this, and uh, you'll you'll be fascinated. Uh, a lot of this propaganda against the poor old squirrel, it's not their fault. They were brought into this country, and they're surviving, and good on them. When I studied up on squirrels, I, uh, I was surprised to find this. I like to get to the bottom of a lot of, a lot of these things and uh, finding this, this real story. There was a Duke, and I got his name, Duke of Bedford, Herbrand Russell. He um, imported a lot of 
squirrels. They had a lot of squirrels imported and sent to different places. And that's, this is, this is the thing. People, well-meaning people got, got, get involved and uh, try and rectify a fault that has been caused by, well, people like them in the first place. But rather than actually know these animals and study these animals and really know what they're doing, which these people don't know what they're doing, I am cold and uh, I think my squirrel here, he's asked me to, uh, to do this video. And, uh, I mean, who who would hate these? These are lovely creatures, isn't they? You're all right, aren't you? So from Sid and me, David, we're going to sign off this video. That's the true story of the grey squirrel. Um, I'll leave a link. And, what's that? Oh. Yeah, he says, don't forget to subscribe and give it a pause up. And what's that? Oh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. You'll be, you'll, he says he's going to be getting some nuts. So we'll off getting nuts with the squirrels. I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it's a nice warmer day. <laughs> Stay safe.